gentlemen, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City at the Cube Studios East, the New York Stock Exchange. We are on the balcony looking out over the floor. The closing bell is soon coming on, day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great guest here, Itai Mayor. Is it back on theCUBE, Chief Security Strategist at Cato Networks, founding mentor of Cato Control. Great to see you, you're back on. We saw you at Black Hat. Now, welcome back here at the Cube East, partnering with NYSE and Brian Bauman, the Wired community. We've got this open source. We merged the Cube communities, community with the NYSE community, and it's been quite the explosion of interaction and engagement. It's great to have you here and see it. Thank you for having me. It was great last time. Looking forward to this. Yeah, I want to say thanks to you for coming on at Black Hat. You know, one of the things about AI that's really interesting is, is that, you know, when we zoom out, we always say this on the Cube. I think we chatted about it in Vegas, the Black Hat was, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's a data risk problem, right? So there's, there's risk management and it's a data. Data is everywhere. And actually all the most progressive AI action right now in generative AI is in the security area. Yeah, there's some infrastructure stuff, low hanging fruit, workflows, yeah, points, point specific uh, productivity gains check. But in terms of big impact, we're seeing a lot of gen AI, mainly because security folks are like skeptical. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's got to work, it can't fail. So you're seeing a lot of focus on real heavy duty security challenges, especially on the threat side, yeah. but also on the resilience side. I mean, you know, cyber resilience traditionally has been a ransomware problem. How do I recover from ransomware? But Gen AI also has the same challenges of resilience. Mm -hmm. I've asked everyone, how do you define, define resilience in Gen AI? Like, uh, well, it's, it's early days, but this is a, we're at the front end, the tip of the spear in the industry is security, in my mind. Of course, you're in it, you probably agree. Yeah, so we, when we look at AI, uh, basically we look at it two different things, right? We use AI for security. Uh, you were saying data, right? So there's huge amounts of data that security folks need to, need to look into. Can't really do it manually, so you use AI in order to find different patterns and identify threats. And on the side of resiliency, on the other hand is, yeah, these systems, these AI systems are going to be targeted. Actually, they already are being yeah. targeted by threat actors. And so we need to make sure that we understand what are the techniques that they're using and how do we protect our own AI systems from these attacks. You know, it's interesting. One of the biggest, well, first of all, the surface area is now expanded, but also security also is a human challenge too. And we don't want to have bad configuration. People get in, but now you have models being promptly injected, prompt injection is a big popular thing, but context poisoning is another one. I mean, it's like getting to the school, you know, people in, in kindergarten, hey, smoke cigarettes, you know, that's good for you. <laughs> like, I mean, you can influ influence the training early, okay? It's, you can do bad things to this data that's not yet been in, informed. How do you undo that? What's the resilience to that, Isai? I mean, that's so, so all these new things are cropping up. There's no observability. There's no real understanding of rollback. I mean, this is security 101. <laughs> I, to be honest, I feel like we're, we're having the same discussions that we had almost 15 years ago around application security, because, because you're right. Threat actors are already targeting AI systems with bad injections. We've, for example, we've seen malware code, where in the code itself, uh, they put injections. Why? Because they know that an AI system will scan it to see if it's bad code, so it's trying to tell the AI, I'm not bad code, I'm actually, you yeah, need yeah. me, right? <laughs> so they try to make sure that they get in. So right, how do we protect from it? And interestingly enough, there is actually a, a very big initiative right now by uh, MITRE called MITRE Atlas uh, that is similar for those who are familiar to uh, um, uh, MITRE Attack to understand how threat actors operate. This is on the AI side. So how are threat actors targeting AI? And we've actually, uh, been part of that initiative along with uh, Microsoft, CrowdStrike, and 15 yeah. other companies. And it's really a deep dive into how threat actors are yeah. targeting AI systems. You know, uh, this year has probably been my most fun I've had at a security conference. Well, I always have fun at the security conferences. Because <laughs> um, you got the RSA, which is kind of like the big marketing show, business show, and then you got Black Hat, which is summer camp for hackers and, and white hats, uh, and, and who knows who's in the crowd there. <laughs> yeah. But this is the year that has been kind of intoxicating from the standpoint of what is automation and trust and delegation concepts around teamwork and working together because now with agents on the horizon, you know, you can almost have these fantasy conversations like, hey, blue and red teams could be hunt AI hunters. Okay, I can I can have I can run digital twin simulations mm -hmm. like simulations to get a sense for where my efficiencies are. So you know this was the first year we've I've had actual conversations like, hey, I'm gonna automate my red team. 
and see what happens. So a lot more going on that's gettable with the horsepower available. What's your reaction to that, Itai? And, and how should companies think about leveraging digital and, and data as first party simulations to get the benefit of what di a digital twin does for manufacturing? Right, so one of the key things around AI, and it's something we, we talk a lot about is it's an enabler, it's in power, right? You can do a lot more with it. You can use a lot more data, you can do a lot more actions. And that goes, as you said, both for the blue teams who are trying to secure it, both for the red teams who are trying to get in. Mm -hmm. And we need to harness that power because as I mentioned before, threat actors are already trying to, to do that. Now, just to kind of make sure that we're on the same uh, uh, level here, uh, there's no autonomous AI attack system yet that can yeah. just go and hack everything by yeah. itself. But the uh, threat actors, and we've seen discussions in Criminal Underground um, Control, the Cyber Threats Research Lab that I run at Cato, uh, we've seen discussions in Russian Underground forums where they're saying, hey, we're hiring machine learning experts and AI experts because we want to build our own solution. We can't rely on the publicly available ones, which are yeah. not that good for us. And so the initiatives are there. I want to, uh, one more thing to add is, we're focusing on AI, targeting AI systems, but what we're also seeing now is AI being used to target more of the legacy systems. So we've seen tools sold on the underground to attack two-factor authentication and know your customer types of attacks. So they're using AI to generate videos and images to yeah. do account, new account fraud and account yeah. takeover. So the threat actors are not just focusing on the latest and greatest, yeah. because they know the industry is still using two-factor authentication, let's target that. Yeah, and that's why they target the old Windows systems that are running some IoT operating technology, OT system that's running an old version of Windows, mm. for instance, I mean, because it's easy to get in, they know those threats, they exploit them. It's, by the way, one thing that I've been playing around with a lot is the LLMs are really good at analyzing code, and you can just take, theoretically, uh, a website, <laughs> throw it in there and it'll find vulnerabilities. It'll find vulnerabilities in the code, find yeah. vulnerabilities in different systems. And so, yeah, that is something that we see being leveraged. You know, we saw this on uh, misinformation over a decade ago. I think I might have been the first one on Silicon Angle to actually report on this, especially on Facebook before that first election was identified as tainted. Um, infrastructure and content, in that case, misinformation, is just a payload of the infrastructure. And you're getting at something that's really important, which is the, the AI capabilities at the infrastructure level have certain intrinsic mechanisms mm -hmm. that can be exploited. The payload for good or bad, you substitute good and bad, it's the same, same execution. What are some of those AI for good opportunities to counter the AI for bad opportunities that are emerging? Because, you know, for the two sides of the coin, you're going to have the good guys could run AI pattern recognition against threats. Mm -hmm. They could understand, maybe get faster Actually, I've seen the poll reverse uh, uh, over the last year. I would always ask, does AI benefit the, the, ha the, the bad guys or the good guys? This was the first year I heard consistency that AI is helping the good guys I agree. than the bad guys. Your thoughts? I completely agree. So far, we've seen the bad guy use it, but only for very specific tasks like writing emails or short snippet of codes, while the security industry has been harnessing this power to be, to be yeah. completely blunt about it, for years now, right? It's, it's been yeah. the buzzword in the last year. The first company I worked for in 2020 used neural networks for <laughs> uh, security, which is AI. Um, so yeah, we do use it. And it gives, as you mentioned, it gives us a lot of opportunities to sift through data lakes, huge amounts yeah. of data, and be able to say, here are three events. By their, on their own, they're, they're benign, but take the three at the same time, add context, and all kinds of things that AI can do, and for a human it would take ages, immediately you can identify that there is a threat. Itai, it's always great to have you on because you run the threat intelligence team, Cato Control, with the acronym Control, like Control Alt Elite, C, mm -hmm. CTRL, um, clever naming. Mm -hmm. You guys see a lot of stuff. You mentioned the Russian underground. There's clearly an economy. I want to get into some of the, the specific things you're seeing, but I want to comment on an, a dynamic that I'm seeing. I want you to give your reaction and maybe some commentary on it. I've seen the speed of agility for the good guys get better, and also law enforcement has been good at disrupting, in some cases arresting uh, folks. I think that one team was arrested a month and a half ago. They were taken down, actually out of the market. Mm -hmm. So what's happening, certainly on the ransomware side, is you can disrupt the bad guys, but they reconstitute quickly. They have good, you know, that's, okay, break, we got bumbled, okay, we got disrupted, yeah. but they know how to get back together an opportunity to keep disrupting and then identifying where they're reconstituting their gang, if you will, because it is an organized crime syndicate. It, it is. What patterns is AI bringing to the table? Is there any movement there? 
um, in terms of identifying and keeping that. Maybe it's a consistent offensive disruption to the bad guys and then identifying movement within their, their ability to reform. So you raised one of the biggest issues with, with intelligence in general, which is once you find a source, do you arrest it or do you let it continue work while monitoring it? Because once you arrest it, as you said, the bad guys move somewhere else. I've seen this in, with a very well-known uh, identity shop that's been used on the dark web. FBI shut them down, which I'm very happy to see. It happened about a, a, month, a year and a half ago. They're already up and running. Uh, yeah. It's a Russian gang that's running somewhere else. So what do you do about it? So what AI does is yet an, it's yet another tool in the tool set of law enforcement, of security companies, to try and correlate, coordinate information, contextualize it, be able to take huge amounts of data. So you know, you look at different posts, the way they are written, uh, different names that they use, yeah. uh, different aliases. There's almost a signature. Itai, that's great. Um, you know, the big thing right now is business results, right? So we love the conversation. You guys are doing great. Love that you got the lab and you're ahead of it and you teach. It's all great. Let's talk about uh, the company. How are you guys doing? Give a quick overview of what the business snapshot of the business. Uh, you guys do a lot of good content, but you know, what are you working on now? Put a plug into what you're working on, looking to hire, is there certain folks you want? Give a plug for, for the company. Okay, so, so first of all, business was doing great, over 2,500 customers. Um, you know, uh, employee-wise, we, we're constantly growing. Uh, major growth coming this year uh, as well, so always looking for uh, those people who want to yeah. get and help companies protect their networks. Yeah. Uh, going in actually in all the different fields, whether it's yeah. R&D, marketing, you know, uh, uh, operations. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, uh, a couple months ago, we talked about uh, yeah. over 200 million in uh, ARR, so the company is constantly growing and having and going up market. So, so you think it'll be public here soon on the big board? Mm, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Next time you come on, we'll make sure that your logo's up there. Get the closing bell coming up here uh, in a few minutes. Uh, great to have you on. Again, big fan of the company. You guys do a great job. And I really appreciate you guys coming on theCUBE. Of course, we cover you on SiliconANGLE. Um, shout out to Eddie, who knows how to get on SiliconANGLE and the team. <laughs> you guys are great to cover. And again, love following the business momentum. AI will be a game changer. You guys invest in a lot of content. Really appreciate that. If you're watching, check out Cato Networks. Ethan, thanks for coming on, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having okay, me. Okay, we are here at the Cube East where we are rolling out our point of presence, our, our access point. This is our media infrastructure connecting Silicon Valley to Wall Street in partnership with the NYSE Wired community that Brian Bauman's been initiating. And again, we are an independent operator on the show floor. You see a lot more coverage coming here from our studio above the balcony as well as a studio we would be building out. And again, we're going to, after here, it's D.C., London, who knows, maybe even Tel Aviv, right? So we will want to put our regions out there and again, love doing what we do and just want to support the Cube. Join the Wired Network. Join the community here in New York, Silicon Valley, or just the Cube in general. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. Thanks for watching.